one of the biggest events in the international art calendar has begun. Art Basel in Hong Kong is showing off installations, paintings, sculptures and digital art from more than 240 international galleries. And this year sees a higher number of participants from the Middle East and Asia, as Briss Klenet found out. From the bright and the beautiful, to the dark and controversial. Chances are you'll find it here, among the works displayed by more than 3,000 artists at Art Basel Hong Kong. The large installations that make up the Encounters exhibition are a highlight of the event. The Encounters works are 100 square meters each. Um, they're substantial, they're up to 14 meters high and up to 10 square meters. And what I do is I knit together associations between the works. I let myself be guided by the proposals. The artists include many from non-Western countries. And I really made a conscious effort this year in my process of selecting the proposals submitted to me by the galleries to think about a strong representation of artists. Among the Asian artists with an installation here is South Korean Kim Soo Ja with her piece Deductive Object. This piece was inspired by Brahmanda, uh, the Indian uh, term uh, black stone that is um, polished until it becomes mirror. I was very much inspired by the shape as well as the spirit of it. Kim Suja admits it can be difficult being an Asian artist in an industry dominated by the West. I also find a certain kind of unfairness and also uh, a certain uh, discrimination as an Asian artist. Thibaut Geffron of the Third Line Gallery in Dubai agrees. He's displaying the works of Monia Farman Famayan. The Iranian artist intertwines influences from her heritage with Western geometric abstraction. I think it's very important now to support her work because she's as important as maybe like iconic artists as Frank Stiller. But you know, like when you go through the history of art, mostly we were focusing on white male artists. But Thibault finds that the art world's love for Middle Eastern pieces is growing. Most of the Iranian collectors own the work by Monir. So now mostly it's US collectors who after the show she had at the Guggenheim two years ago were really impressed by this use of geometry and tradition also from the Iran. Walid City is from Iraq. He's been living in London since the 1980s when he was granted political asylum. The motifs running through his work are destruction and construction, dislocation and fragility. My artwork uh, through all my career has been shaped by my, uh, the political situation back in Iraq and the region as a whole. I think my life and my art uh, somehow have uh, much uh, uh, influenced by that uh, event, the event of uh, many, many decades so far, many wars, upheavals, uh, immigration, um, uh, destruction, uh, invasions. Walid believes art is the perfect platform for promoting understanding between cultures. The Middle East is a center of the event uh, in politics today, so it's bound to attract some attention and of course the culture will be the forefront in such an event. And it's rightly so and I, I think it should be more even really, to build more bridges and more dialogue. It's all to do with some finding a common ground uh, through culture, through art. More than 3,000 people are expected to visit Art Basel during its three days in Hong Kong. All are bringing with them a different eye for what makes a good work of art. How do you like your art? Abstract? Contemporary? Well, how about 3D? This year's Art Basel has a bit of a tech twist. Enter virtual reality art, promising to bring your masterpieces to life. Google's Tilt Brush allows artists to paint in three-dimensional space. The jury's still out on whether the technology will transform the industry. But another gadget is in everyone's hand at Art Basel, where visitors can enjoy getting up close and personal with the latest and greatest in the art world. Brit Klenet, TRT World, Hong Kong.